So you guys already know Zane got buffed in a hot fix uh, this past Thursday with Bloody Harvest. This video is going to be going over the changes to Zane, the operative. There were, what, six skill changes and four class mod changes. I spent all day messing around with a bunch of this stuff. We are going to hop straight into the game, and I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts on all of these buffs so far. And also, a lot of them are better than you think, and uh, there is one thing we have to go over. Now, before we do any of that, if I could please ask you guys to drop a like on the video and hit that subscribe button for more Borderlands 3 videos, especially Zane videos, and there's gonna be lots more Zane buffs coming. As it says right here, additional changes to Zane are already planned with some coming in future hot fixes and patches. Now, that's the first thing we're gonna be talking about today is yesterday was a actual hot fix. It was not a patch. So these buffs to Zane are currently all that they can give us because it's a hot fix and not a patch. They can kind of only adjust numbers and stuff in hot fixes, and that's what they did with this hot fix. And it literally says right here that there will be Zane buffs um, in a future patch. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out right now, because some of these buffs were a bit underwhelming, you know, let's just be honest. But some of them were pretty awesome, and some of that gameplay footage uh, you are seeing in the background or you saw earlier, it doesn't really matter. But some of that gameplay footage is with some of these other class mods. And I wanna go over a lot of this stuff I was messing around with today. As you guys see right here, we actually have six skill changes and four class mod changes. So let's go ahead and go over these skill changes. The first one we're gonna be covering is Cold Boar. Zane gains increased weapon swap speed. The next shot fired after swapping weapons deals bonus cryo damage. So you can actually see the little symbol um, right down at the bottom left, it is next to playing dirty. That is uh, cold boar. So when we shoot, that symbol goes away. When we swap weapons and swap back, it comes back. So let's go ahead and make sure this is dealing 200% cryo damage. There it is. We have 2 million fire and 2 million cryo. Keep in mind the test dummy's flesh, so the fire will be similar. But this is about 200%. Uh, you know, the millions are rounding up and down or whatever. And this is a pretty insane cryo bonus. This skill is actually so awesome. Any high damage, whether it's a shotgun or a launcher or a sniper, any single like shot high damage weapon that's supposed to do as much damage possible in one shot will be good with this skill. Like for example, equipped, I have a King's Call, a Plague Bearer, a Hellwalker, and a Backburner. And uh, there's other good guns that this is gonna be good with as well, like snipers, like I said. 200% cryo damage is actually crazy, and there's really good ways to use it as well. Next, in the red tree, the first thing we should talk about is duct tape mod. Now, let's go ahead and just show you guys a little issue with duct tape mod real quick. So let's get it to trigger. Now, you guys see when the grenade fired, um, we have the little icon showing up. If you actually check the times on YouTube, you can see that the cooldown is actually still eight seconds. So this hotfix is just a little bit bugged. I actually already reported it, uh, so none of you guys have to. So currently, uh, there is no buff to duct tape mod. My thoughts on it, I actually think it is a decent buff. It's much better than what it used to be. Four seconds instead of eight seconds is a bit more reasonable, but it is what it is for now. It's still not the greatest skill ever, but it is really nice to get extra grenades out there on the battlefield, especially with the anointments like the 25% on grenade throw. Now the next skill we're gonna be talking about is also in the red tree. This is Trick of the Light. Now Trick of the Light deals bonus cryo damage to enemies that aren't targeting you. Now here's a tip. If you guys want to actually make Trick of the Light work, then you have to use Clone. Clone will draw aggro and enemies will literally take their focus off of you onto Clone. And that is how you use Trick of the Light the best. Now this got buffed from 12% cryo damage per point to 15% cryo damage per point. So I got a 3% buff. Um, to be honest with you guys, this is not a significant buff to this skill. This skill just needs buffed further or changed in some way to just be more uh, usable. Also, one thing I want to point out about, out about Trick of the Light real quick is uh, when this game first came out, Trick of the Light was shock damage and they ended up changing it to cryo. I actually think it was better as shock damage, especially when we have all this cryo damage now over here on Cold Boar. The next skill we're going to be talking about is Like a Ghost. Now what Like a Ghost does is Zane and his Digiclone gain chance to ignore bullets. This chance is increased for a few seconds after activating the action skill and you can stack the effect. Now the thing about this skill 
is it's just ignore bullet chance and uh, it's also 5% per point. This got buffed from 3%, I'm pretty sure, to 5%. So once again, not a really significant buff. Um, at least in terms of just percentages, it didn't really go up that much. And yeah, the thing about this skill is it just doesn't offer you anything really. You have no issues with survivability without this skill. And this skill does not add damage at that point then too. What I would like to see this skill change to is either Bullet Reflect, but make sure it Mayhem skills and does a bunch of damage, or uh, Bullet Absorb. Because Bullet Absorb could actually be pretty freaking cool on Zane or his clone. Um, or imagine if you could absorb the bullets uh, from your clone, like clone refilled your ammo. That would be insane, uh, and this would be a good skill. Finally, we are moving on to Futility Belt. Now, what Futility Belt does is Zane gains resistance against non-elemental damage, and then he also gets a kill skill. After killing an enemy, all elemental damage is converted to non-elemental damage. So it's a pretty cool skill in how it works. This was buffed from 15% damage reduction to 20% damage reduction. Uh, once again, in my opinion, not a really significant buff, even with Stiff Upper Lip, which is 16% damage resistance. It's kind of like Like a Ghost. Zane has no issue surviving, especially using the All-Rounder or using uh, the skill Salvation. It's just like, I don't know. I picked it up in this setup because why not? But I don't know. It, M10 enemy damage it just does not do enough, in my opinion. It would be great, once again, if this skill could just give us some damage instead. Get us down through the green tree, put an icebreaker on this skill, anything. Next, we've got Best Serve Cold. Now, this buff was actually kind of significant, in my opinion. This was actually doubled. Now, this isn't a skill that you can just take on Mayhem 10 uh, with any build and expect it to do much work for you, at least in any serious endgame content, like the Malawan or the Guardian takedown. However, I do believe if you actually build completely around this skill, I think you can do something with it. With that being said, uh, you know, to not really be a useful skill unless you're fully building around it, um, I don't know, maybe it could just do more damage or offer something else. And that is it for all the skill buffs. Let's go ahead and move on to the class mod buffs because you guys saw some gameplay from some of those class mods I was using. Now, if you take a look at like my uh, executor and my conductor here, these are not god rolls, um, especially with I was using the Hellwalker a lot. And you guys saw I also had the King's Call and the Plague Bearers. These like don't even really have any bonuses for those uh, weapons. And in my opinion, these buffs were pretty freaking decent. I had no issue mobbing um, or anything like that, uh, especially the conductor in the Guardian takedown could be very, very good. 100% bonus shock damage is pretty sweet. Both of these class mods for mobbing, I'm definitely very happy with. I believe I don't recommend either of these for bossing, unless the boss has a very easy uh, crit spot you can hit. Uh, but even in that case, you'll have to be cycling kill skills or uh, trying to kill mobs, basically. But both of these class mods were definitely buffed um, well enough. The Executor now gets 75% crit damage, but if you take Death Follows close, that puts you up at 93% crit damage. So this class mod in a regular build for endgame gives you 93% critical hit damage, which is pretty strong in my opinion. Now the main thing I want to point out about these class mods is the future changes to Zane. I believe if they implement uh, some more changes and some reworks of certain skills um, in his uh, skill tree as well, um, like mo a little bit more passive damage possibly in the green tree, these class mods will become much better even at that point. Um, because Zane won't rely so much on uh, keeping his kill skills active at all times, there are a lot of times with Cold Boar right now where I can just activate Cold Boar with Conductor. That is 300% bonus elemental damage between this class mod and Cold Boar, at least for that shot. It's pretty crazy on a Hellwalker or a Launcher or a Sniper or anything like that. And uh, honestly, same goes for the Executor. 93% crit damage is a lot. The next two class mods we are going to be talking about are um, in a similar position. Now, the Antifreeze is obviously much more powerful than the Texpert, but I want to talk about how uh, both of these class mods' abilities do not do too much. Now, first, let's talk about the Antifreeze. Now, the buff to the Antifreeze was the movement speed you gain while cryoed. So it used to be 25%. Now it's 100%. You actually move faster while cryoed right now. So I am, am gonna shoot myself with some cryo damage and watch this. We are running pretty fast right now. You guys are gonna notice when the cryo damage is gone, we're running slower. Let's do that again. 
We run slower when the cryo damage is gone. So you actually run faster now while cryoed. This is awesome. I would love it if they just put cryo immunity on the class mod because then you would be able to slide. Um, it kind of sucks you can't slide. At the same time, the fact that you can actually run faster with cryo gives you a little bit of incentive to get cryoed by enemies. Um, I kind of don't recommend cryoing yourself. It's a lot of extra work to do to just run faster. But this is gonna be a very strong class mod because it has five points, or because you can get up to five points into violent momentum. Now there's one thing that I did want to mention about the anti-freeze class mod, and that is the damage, the first passive bonus on it. While sliding or airborne, Zane gains 40% weapon damage and 20% damage reduction. Now, uh, the issue with this 40% weapon damage is it is completely redundant, on a vi especially on a violent momentum class mod. Zane gets hundreds of percentages of gun damage when moving and shooting. It's that simple. If you, I'm not saying full slide. I'm not saying full sprint, jump through the air. I'm saying strafing and shooting. Zane, especially with this many points into violent momentum, will get hundreds of percentages of gun damage. This 40% weapon damage on it is nothing. The sliding and airborne anointments that they took out of the game, those used to be fully multiplicative. They were not weapon damage. But for some reason, the anti-freeze class mod is weapon damage. So if they could actually just put the sliding and airborne anointments onto this class mod, that would be insane. And it would actually propel this class mod into a really awesome spot. Now, let's talk about the Texpert. In my opinion, the Texpert actually has a lot of potential. Now, there's one glaring... It, well, there's two issues with the Texpert, but there's one, uh, just the, the most obvious issue. This class mod gives you zero damage. That's the main issue with the Texpert. This uh, class mod, now with 15% chance to recharge your Sentinel, it used to be 5%, so it went from 5 to 15. I believe this is significant enough to use as a reliable means of keeping your drone active. So that means you can have a non com cool collected build and keep your drone active. Now, uh, the clone or the barrier going down is not as big of a deal in my opinion, and keeping your drone active is very important. Now, one main change I recommend to this class mod is to put Death Follows Close onto it. Putting Death Follows Close onto it, along with some uh, skill tree buffs, like I was talking about with the previous class mods, would be very, very strong. It would be a, it's a very powerful skill. And if you put it onto this class mod, you would be able to use this um, over C and Dead. Also, the second thing I have to mention to it is uh, we need to add a second passive to this. Just recharging Sentinel, cooldown and duration, uh, in my opinion, is not the best passive uh, ever. Um, if we could get more action skill damage on this to make your drone do more damage, or for example, if we could get um, a debuff where uh, whenever Zane is targeting an enemy with the drone, that enemy takes 50% more damage or something. Um, I believe any passive that is pretty simple like that would make this class mod very viable along with Death Follows Close being on it and get rid of really expensive jacket. Now, alrighty guys, those were the four class mod changes and the six uh, skill changes. All my opinions and thoughts on them. Uh, we're definitely gonna be posting builds uh, using some of these class mods. And uh, the great thing about it is these will just be preliminary builds. They said in the patch notes that there are future patches and potentially future more future hotfixes coming to Zane the operative i'm so excited it's uh it's what we've been working for guys and i'm just really happy to make this video and the future videos coming soon so that is going to be it from me guys uh we might as well cut it right there don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more borderlands 3 videos and i'll see you guys in the next one i'm out